This is an addendum to the part four video on fire modeling. I reanalyzed the problem, changing the heat release rate per unit area from a constant value to a function or curve. This shows the total heat release rate obtained in the previous analysis. Clearly, the pyrosim prediction was significantly above the experimental observations. Note that the total heat released was correct. It was only the heat release rate that was too large. What to do? Well, when wood is ignited in a calorimeter, the heat release rate is not constant. Instead, it peaks and then declines to a steady value. I did not have experimental data for the wood used in the crib experiment, but I did decide to normalize a typical curve and then use it in a new analysis. We get out the handy dandy Digidata program and click on the image to digitize the curve. This is the final normalized heat release rate per unit area that I used. I assumed the peak heat release rate per unit area to be 175 kilowatts per meter squared. Let us step back and review what we are doing. We obtain basic heat release rate per unit area data from a calorimeter experiment. Then, each cell of the model is assumed to burn at the rate defined by that curve after it ignites. The result is an integrated total heat release rate that combines the heat released from each burning grid face. The point is that we are moving one step closer to actually burning the wood than if we just specify a total known heat release rate. Here, the total heat release rate depends on how each cell face in the model burns. This is about as far as we can go without actually starting to model pyrolysis of the wood. Now, in the model, the heat release rate per unit area of the surface is multiplied by the normalized curve so that the heat release rate per unit area is now a function of time after ignition of that surface. As before, we ignite the wood crib with heptane. The crib burns. And eventually, the crib starts to burn away. Although the simulation had only 500,000 cells, the small size of 20 millimeters used to represent the crib geometry meant that the solution time steps were very small. This analysis took one week running on the Amazon cloud. The calculated total heat release rate is much closer to the experimentally observed value than the previous analysis where a constant heat release rate was assumed. Note that the only parameter I adjusted was the peak heat release rate per unit area. Ideally, this would come from calorimeter experiments. We thank VTT for performing and documenting the crib burning experiments. Without FDS, pyrosim would not exist.